Hey everybody. Um, so we got a doozy this week. Kaylina designed this beautiful wallet that is very um, Billabong-esque in the best possible way. Uh, it's very like 2004, but this one's made out of leather. Full zip. If you've never done a corner zip before, she made it super easy. I love the layout of this wallet. There's a pocket behind there. There's an ID slot. There's a card pocket here. There's card pockets here. This one has three, but the pattern has two because we decided that was enough card pockets. It's a great piece. So we're gonna dive into it, and I figured I have the pattern to show you that you can go down in the description, grab it if you want, but I figured get everything cut out. We are using, this is Wicket and Craig Natural Veg Tan, around two, three ounces. This is Newberry Leathers American Bison uh, for our front, and we're gonna do a lot of skiving to keep this thing thin. So the first thing we're gonna do is skive down our shell so that we can glue in our liner. We're going toluene free on the barge this week. And for the liner, we're using the thinnest spot of veg tan we could find. This is Wicket, and there was a little thin spot of like two ounce. But this can be as thin as you want. We don't need any extra bulk here, just to make it look nice. So first we'll make sure that the bison is fully coated. And now we just do this over the liner so there's already a little bit of glue there. And then we'll just glue inside the Sharpie line so we know that we have enough space to glue our liner in. So this is our exterior shell. This is uh, Newberry Leathers American Bison, which has a lot of really beautiful grain that goes both ways, so I thought it'd be really interesting to use. I'm just gonna put this down on one end and then make sure, I, I'm not gonna just put it down, I'm gonna work my way so that I don't get any air bubbles trapped. And then once we're done with that, I'm going to take my roller that probably still needs WD-40 on account of me never having put WD-40 on it. And just make sure that that's nice and stuck in all directions. Because we skive this, it's not going to be the same. So you're going to want to kind of go over like a speed bump to make sure all the edges are really stuck. First thing we're going to do is put the card bank together. So I'm going to use some token all on veg tan because it's quick and it was funny a lot of you guys were talking about in our video in the video the Q&A video did a lot of you guys talked about how you use the bags that we send you to burnish and so do we <laughs> it's literally what we burnish with so it's just two pieces you have your outer pocket which has a trim tolerance they both actually both pockets have a tolerance for trimming because this is such a kind of a more complicated piece I wanted to make sure that no matter what leather you used, you got full coverage on everything. So uh, these are the two that need to be burnished and I actually probably should have skived this piece. So we'll skive this piece after I burnish it before we glue it in. On the back card pocket assembly, which is the piece that we're making right now, it's the smaller piece with all the card pockets, uh, there's a dotted line here and that dotted line shows you where you're gonna line up the T pocket. So all I'm gonna do is make a light mark on one side and a light mark on the other side. If you're only gonna use this paper template once, you could just cut this off, but I wouldn't scribe a line the whole way because the pocket has a curve in it. But you can do that that way if you'd like. So that's really the only uh, guide that we need for measurements. I have gone through and I skive down the back of this pocket I also skive down three of the four sides of this pocket. This wallet isn't, I've never made this wallet before and it looks crazy and hard to make. Kaylee assures me it's not that difficult, but it is a wallet that you wanna make sure you thin out as much as you can in as many places as you can because there's a lot of layers. So if you aren't very good at skiving, this would be a great project to practice on because always thinking ahead, all the skives are just straight. There's no curves. So you're just skiving like straight, 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 and then everything is skived in the right spot, and you end up with this crazy, awesome design, but there's no, like you're not doing complex shapes. So this is, would be a really good project to practice skiving on. 
All right, uh, so we're going to install our T-Pocket. And remember, we have trim allowance on either side. So you just want to make sure that you have it as centered as you can. And we'll give that a tap down. Now we're going to stitch across this bottom so that our pockets don't slide through, but we're not going to install this pocket until we install our snap, which is a little confusing. So we'll go through that as soon as we have this stitched up. Okay, so here's the tricky part. It's not tricky for you because you have the pattern, but this piece that we're making right now is not the full length of the wallet. It ends right here. So our button is going to be off center. So you may look at the pattern and think, well, I'm going to move the button to the center. Don't. Punch it out where it is on the pattern. There will be an arrow to show you which direction that this is going to lay in the pattern itself, right? Because if we look at, this is the full length of the wallet. That's the full length of the pattern, right? But if we butt it up where this seam is, you can see it centered there. If we center it here, then our whole wallet is gonna sit like this. So make sure you follow these arrows and you punch the holes where they are. It's not a mistake that it's gonna be off center on this piece. Okay, so as you can see, looks a little bit wonky, but that's okay. So we're gonna grab our glue, glue this up. And then while this is drying, we can, I think our shell is dry enough to put together. So remember, we have a little trim allowance here, so I'm gonna go a little deep on the glue line to make sure that all sides are hitting our main piece, which is the true size. And then we can always just go into the bone folder after if we need to and just break that glue free. This bison skives really, really nice. It skived down nice and smooth. Um, so now that our glue is dry on the pocket, Remember, you don't want to glue it centered. Glue it so the pocket is centered and the snap is not. Now we're ready to trim this. So we'll flip this over. Those are all the trim allowances. Be a little bit careful. It is weird trimming a trim allowance when you have a piece of hardware set because you have that bump there. The sides won't be hard, but the back, take your time. If you need to use a ruler, use a ruler. Just watch your fingers. And then once, see what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it off the side of my cutting board and that'll offset at least a little bit of the height of this hardware that's already installed. And you also wanna make sure not to use, I don't even know if these exist, but like, if there's like a double cap snap, Glove snaps I probably wouldn't use for this because they're not flat on the back. Remember, you're gonna be sliding cards in and out of this. So you want a nice, like a, I don't know, I did line 20. I don't know the sizes of these. A, this, it's a smaller snap, but it's not a glove snap. Anything that has like a, a rounded back to it, you're not gonna to wanna to use because then the cards won't slide in and out. So now all we have to do is refer to our diagram here. And we know that we need to stitch this side because then we're going to put our pocket bank together and we'll have not only a card slot here, here, and here, but one on top there. So we'll get this stitch next. So before we burnish, I'm gonna sand down. I don't have any 200 grit, just flat sandpaper. So I just grabbed a sanding disc, but it's just a flat space. So it's easiest. We have a sanding drum, um, but I find it easiest to level everything by just putting this flat on our board and just kind of sanding it down like this until it's good and ready. Again, this is 200 grit. Then what I'll do is I'll go in and bevel my edges and sand with 400 grit. And then just, uh, and then you're good. So now that we have the top burnished, we are ready to install it onto the main sleeve, uh, the main piece that carries the card bank. And then we're gonna sew it on this side. And so I'm gonna just use my uh, cutting board lines make sure everything is even because we're at the point where I can't really give you marks anymore because depending on the thickness of your leather, everyone's is going to be a little bit different. So what we want to do is we want to glue here, 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 
and then every side that is not stitched on our pocket bank. And remember, oh, do I have to sky this? Um, maybe like two sides, three sides. So yes. So yes. Okay, so we're gonna sky this first. So what I'm gonna do is, so since we're building, we're building this, right? And we want it to be as thin as possible. So we're not, I'm not skiving the inside here because I already skived it. I didn't skive this or this, so it'll be nice and thick. But there are so many layers here that I'm gonna skive all of these sides down. So that means we need to skive that side, that side, and that side. And I have my second pair of calipers set to about a quarter of an inch. And I've done skiving videos before, but this is how I like to mark where I'm skiving because it gives me the tiniest groove that I can stick my skiving knife in. It makes my hand on skives look all nice and tidy like a belt skiver. So now we are going to stitch. I'm going to mark where my bottom stitch line is going to end up, and then I'm going to go up like a stitch from that and stitch up to there. So now we have one side of the wallet fully done and we can glue it onto the wallet itself. So again, I'm just using my cutting board to make sure that everything is straight and lined up. And I'm just gonna glue around the non-stitch edges that we skived and around these edges and we'll glue it together. I'm not sure if we're gonna stitch this part yet or we'll wait till everything's together. I'm guessing it's probably better to stitch this part first and then stitch the other part. Uh, I think I stitched it all together, but I guess right. it doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. We're gonna take the glue drying time to make a game plan here. All right, so we have one side, one side of our wallet done. But I'm not gonna stitch it yet. I'm gonna wait until everything's done, go around, sand everything, stitch it all together. Now we need to start preparing for the zipper section, which I know I've said is daunting, but it's really not that difficult. First thing we need to do is we need to figure out what we need to skive. Now, if we look at this, we are going to have three layers of leather here. And I don't want to sky this one because it will be a pain in the butt to do. So this piece wraps around like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and sky this piece. Then we're going to install our female snap end and glue this onto here. Now on Killian's wallet, she stitched this. You don't have to if you don't want to. This little window here. You can if you want. I'm gonna leave mine plain, um, but I am gonna skive this whole thing down and install this, and then we'll get this glued together. Okay, so a little party trick here. We need a male, or a female end on this side, since we installed the male on the other side, but we don't want the cap, which usually attaches to the male side. So we have the normal female cap on the top, but we left the male cap on the bottom, so that way, that way when we install it, It'll be nice and smooth, and you'll be able to slide your ID in and out. There we go. So I have everything burnished. The ID window's burnished, the top of the card pocket's burnished. Everything's ready to go. Does not matter which side you put this on. Um, I'm just gonna, again, use my gridded mat. Make sure that's square. Put this here, make sure that's nice and lined up, and make my marks so I know where to glue to. And then another, just another glue up. It's zipper time. 
So the way that we put this in the pattern is just with numbers because again, I'm not gonna make you cut out a 10 inch strip of half inch leather. Um, we need an 11 and a half inches of zipper. This is Riri's number four size. That's the best size we found for this design. And I'm going to pull it apart and immediately put a keeper on it so that it's even. I'm gonna go with one of these and then probably rivet something on. You can also do, all Riri tape is two-sided. So if you want to, or both ways, I guess. So if you want to, you can put two on. Um, I don't think this needs it. Get in there. There we go. Okay. So I'm gonna zip this all the way to the end. The next thing we need is two strips of 10 inch long leather at a half inch wide. So I'm just gonna get these at a right angle and the right, the correct length, which is 10 inches. Then we're gonna use some double stick tape. And this is pretty much the part that makes the rest of this way easier than uh, a lot of other zippers taking corner situations. Um, I'll go to 10 inches, just barely. So now we need the double stick tape and we'll show you. Oh, first, actually, no. Okay, so first we have 11 and a half inches of zipper and 10 inches of leather. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark three quarter of an inch just with a little dot on the end of my zipper tape on both sides, on both sides of both sides. And that will tell us we want our 10 inches of leather to come in here because in the end, these ends are gonna wrap into the wallet making sure that the zipper never comes off really. Okay, so this might be really re specific, but if you look, the weave of this nylon, there are one, two, three stripes, right? So you have the edge, one stripe, two stripe, three stripes. I'm gonna take a thin double stick tape and I am going to place it in the second stripe. That's gonna be my rough guide. And I'm just gonna follow along the weave to make sure that it stays equidistant from the brass teeth as best as possible. So we get to here. And we're gonna take our scissors and clip that off. We're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna make sure that we're nice and flat. We haven't gotten this uh, <laughs> intricate in a, in a very long time. Bring it in the new year. Yep. Then we're going to do the same thing on this side. And so for all, for if you're using a tape that is not this tape, um, actually, I'm going to give it to you in millimeters. Um, so we have one point. 1.2 millimeters from the edge of the tape to the end of the teeth, and we are putting the tape three millimeters in. So we're gonna go slowly, and we're gonna go one side at a time, and we're not gonna rush. We're gonna get our TED's tape separated. Then we're gonna take one of our 10 inch pieces, strips of leather, and we're going to glue it facing inwards, because eventually this is gonna be flipped out. And I'm just gonna line it up with the edge of our zipper. Now this is why this number four really works really well for this design, because it was designed to be used with number four Riri. So I have my little red mark there. And again, I always talk about the genius of Killian's designs, but like, look at the tolerance. There is literally zero tolerance. It's unbelievable. There we go. So it's almost quitting time here at the shop. What I'm gonna do is I am going to simply 
sew down this line, and sew down this line. Seems like it would be harder than that, but the more intricate stuff comes once we get to this point, and we have to add our gussets and everything and take our 90 degree turns. But all we have to do is do a stitch line down here and a stitch line down here. Now I would recommend, since we have three millimeters, you have a three millimeter spacing here, four millimeter really with the tape, I would recommend setting your depth of your stitch line to four millimeters so that when you open this up, you don't see any tape. You want you want it to be nice and clean like that. All right, so we are back. I tried to wear the same thing for continuity, not because I forgot to do my laundry. And um, so we're gonna install, so we have our zipper is sewn in on each side. So when we fold this over, we have our zipper there, nice and clean. Now the one thing we did on this pattern is you can see here the corners are rounded. Now it depends on your skill level. You might want to round these a little more, a little bit less. You might want to keep it straight, but we're going to need to take this corner. And the more rounded this corner is, the easier sewing this in is going to be. So I am going to take from Buckle Guys Acrylic Kit their one inch spacer. And I'm going to mark all of my corners and round them. Now I'm going to mark the corners on our main wallet that we've sewn our pockets into. And on, this is going to fold over. Those are the, the eight corners I'm gonna mark and cut. And I'm gonna do that now um, at this step because the next step is sewing in the zipper, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna need those rounded so that we can sew our zipper in comfortably and not, and it is very possible to do it totally square, but um, I'm not good enough to do that. So we're gonna go with that. And you want to cut them Either, right? it's yeah, like, you want to get all trimmed in and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so then it's like easier to line everything up. Yeah, but if you do, you could go like with a three quarter or a half inch round too. You don't have to go as extreme yeah. as one inch, but the pattern will support one inch and still fit all cards and all that kind of stuff. It's not, one inch is not a super aggressive curve. And it's designed so that if you do one inch, the curve ends right at the pocket. Look at that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we have our, what will eventually be our zip pouch. This is the most confusing part to me, um, but we're gonna get through it together. On our gussets, I've skived three sides and left the top full thickness. That'll just give it a little pliability. What we're gonna do is, you have to remember that this is the top of our zip pouch, see? That's the top. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, all we have to do is line up the bottom of the gusset with the top of our ID pocket. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make a little mark here and a little mark there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And in that way, we know where to apply glue to, and we're applying it only to one side of each gusset. But you wanna make sure you apply it to opposite sides. So if you're gonna apply glue on the left of one gusset, apply it to the right of the other gussets so that they face in like this, because they're eventually going to be bent over like that. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna, we have our, what will eventually be our zip pouch. This is the most confusing part to me. Um, but we're gonna get through it together. On our gussets, I've skived three sides and left the top full thickness. That'll just give it a little pliability. What we're gonna do is, you have to remember that this is the top of our zip pouch, see? That's the top. So what we're gonna do is we're going to, all we have to do is line up the bottom of the gusset with the top of our ID pocket. So I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make a little mark here, and a little mark there, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And 
and in that way we know where to apply glue to and we're applying it only to one side of each gusset but you want to make sure you apply it to opposite sides so if you're going to apply glue on the left of one gusset apply it to the right of the other gusset so that they face in like this because they're eventually going to be bent over like that Come on. So now it's time to glue in the first part of our zipper. You get to make a choice here where you want your zipper pull to start. I am going to consider this top pocket as the top of the wallet, and I like how the zipper is at the top here. So what we have to remember is that this entire, I'm only laughing because we don't usually make things this intense, and it's gonna, it's super cool, but it takes a lot of thought. So it's not gonna end up like this, it's gonna end up like this. So we want our zipper pull to start here. Now the nice thing about this pattern is everything starts and ends at the top of this pocket. So we're gonna glue around this whole thing and then we're gonna glue this side, just this one, this one edge. So with this kind of double seam here, it's super easy to just move everything else out of the way so you don't risk getting any glue on your zipper. Just go kind of slow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna glue this part in and sew it all around. Then we're basically gluing the rest of the uh, zipper piece together and gluing it into the wallet. And believe it or not, after that, all we have to do is sew around the whole zipper and we're a burnish away from being done. So it looks complicated. To me doing it for the first time, as someone who's done this for 15 years, it feels complicated, but it's really not that bad. Kaylin did a really good job of making the three-sided zipper super accessible for people who don't really know how to do the other way, which is me. I'm that person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm people. <laughs> so what I've done is I made some marks in the center line of this piece, so five inches because it's 10 inches. And then this piece from this way, this is about four and a half inches, so two and a quarter inches here. The way we're gonna glue this in is we're going to glue, we're gonna match up this seam with all of our other seams in our pocket. Then we're gonna go over to this side and match up the, these seams and glue those down a little bit as well. You wanna use a really good glue for this, obviously. Then we're gonna go in the center, flip that up, and center our marks. So it's gonna look really, really weird. But what this is gonna do is to prevent, it's gonna prevent us from over stretching this corner, like as you, as you watch me flip this corner, it's gonna look like we have too much leather, but we don't, we have just enough. A lot of the times when you take a corner like this, you'll stretch it to the point where you end up with it misshapen. And this way, we'll have just enough. I do need a bone folder to flatten this, but we'll get to that point. So you could say, you could see here, we're lying nice and flat, and you wanna kinda of come from the sides. And this is not easy. I'm not gonna pretend that this is super simple. 
But remember, it's leather, it's tough, it can take it. And if you have to do a little bit of trimming, that's totally fine. But it's better to trim a little off than to not have enough. There we go. And one inch is a tight curve to take, so if you've never done this before like I haven't, <laughs> you gotta just make it through. Okay, so that is close enough that I'm gonna go whip out my bone folder and get these two corners flattened down. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my power sander, I'm going to sand this all level, and then we're going to actually sew and or punch and stitch just this line because this is a standalone seam. And then once we do the same thing to this side, it all gets glued to the wallet and then we're ready to sew around the whole thing and then we're pretty much done. These are like not hard, but they're like stress, like, right. I know it's going to work. It just feel, it's just like nice when it's done. It's really nice when it's done. <laughs> that there, that's what I need. Whew. Okay, so we're done with the first side. And like I said, it looks intimidating, but you can see it's not the most perfect. But I also, this is the first time I'm making this and in the new year, with Kaylina designing as much. I think it's important that you watch me make something for the first time too, because I don't want our channel, or leather work in general, but mostly our channel, to be this super polished, everything goes right the first time, everything's gonna look absolutely perfect thing. This is what it looks like when you make a pattern for the first time. And this is absolutely, totally passable once we hammer these stitches down, and we get a good little, good little burnish and the thing I like about using this main thread too is that you'll see it looks a little thin right now but since it's a braided flat wax cord once we hammer it down it'll spread out to fill in all those holes and it'll look really nice so take your time going around these corners but give them a good whack and then remember you do have the snap that you're going to probably want to move off of here fills in that nice, and I bobbled a little bit, but first time making it. You make a second one, it's gonna be a ton better. I just wanted to show you the process of me making this for the first time. Now the corners are very tight, but just hammer the hell out of them. All right, so I have as you can see, this came out really nice. Not perfect, but it's gonna look really, really nice when we're done. And if it's your first time doing it, your corners don't have to be perfect. So to do this, we have to do this again on the other side, the glue part, but we don't stitch it. So we're gonna get this whole piece together, then we're gonna glue it to the main body of the wallet, then all we have to do is stitch around the wallet. So we have our center mark here, all I'm going to do, this is about four and a half inches wide, so I'm going to go to about two and a quarter and make a mark there again. To mark where we're going to glue to on the bottom, since we lined our gussets up with our ID pocket, we're just going to use our ID pocket template and make a little mark on either side. So just line it up roughly. And, you know, if you get a little over, no big deal. You're not going to see this is going to have a thing folded into it. You don't have to worry about anyone seeing extra glue here. This is in the depths of the cavern of the wallet. <laughs> All right, so more glue time. This is this is a, a piece of work right here. <laughs> you can make it too in this hundred step process. <laughs> People will make it. Can you imagine this thing tooled? Jeez, yeah, this thing be sick. You could also that's no, that's not the front. That yeah. So I always love ID slots because they're a great spot to put your logo because mm -hmm. 
people look at the wall, they're like, whoa, that's a lot of logo. And then you're like, well, yeah, but put your ID in it. And they're like, well, the logo goes away. You're like, yeah. Because I'm not a big fan of huge branding. I mentioned yesterday that my fingernails were blue because I was painting, not because I have heart condition, right? You did, yeah. Okay, I wanted to clarify that. Like, and make sure it was clarified. Because YouTube comments are one thing, but that was a little bit of a stretch. No disrespect to the person who cared that much about my health. I appreciate it. Maybe they're studying medical care and they're just really oversaturated right now. I mean, anything's possible, you know? So remember, we're not gluing the zipper in first. We got to glue the gusset in first. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of glue to the gusset. And what I, the reason that I glued around the whole thing here is because then we're going to add a second layer of glue. And a lot of times, like this is a very dense hide, even though it's very thin, a second layer of first layer of glue is a good foundation. And when you add a second layer of glue, especially like barge cement, it just makes it a little more sticky. And with all this going on, we're gonna need as much help as we can get. So once these are dry, we'll fold this up and we'll line up our mark here with the bottom of our gusset. Then we'll go in and we'll glue our zipper and put everything together. So we had a lapse in camera, um, but basically I lined up the gusset to the dot we made and I glued it on either side. And now we need to do basically what we did on this side and we need to glue our gusset in here, and then we will have a wallet, which would actually just be a wallet on its own as well. <laughs> um, you can choose to end these zippers however you want. Um, all we're gonna do is tuck them in like that. That's all you really need to do. Um, you could put an end cap on them too. For brevity, I'm just gonna tuck them in and show you how it's done. Um, everyone has personal preference. So the next thing we need to do is glue all the rest of this up, and this actually makes it a little bit easier because we can flip the zipper out like this. And we already have one layer of glue here. So I can go in, just be careful, you're not getting glue on things you don't wanna get glue on. I'm gonna go in here and glue this down. Remember, we're starting right there. And I'm gonna add a second layer of glue to the top. And this is why we skive this down too. This will be nice and thin because it's being glued to the wallet body too. There we go. Then, easy, we're gluing the outside of this. So the only thing you wanna be careful of is not getting glue on your wallet pocket. If you're using like a veg tan where um, barge doesn't like to come off. If you're using like a, like a Newberry Leathers or a Chrome tan or literally anything else, you can just wipe it off. But veg tan is very unforgiving when it comes to um, barge stains. And I'm going to do a healthy layer of glue on this. I might go back and do a second, but I think with the second layer on the other half, we should be good to go as far as like everything holding together is concerned. So in this one, I'm going to start in the center. Get that guy stuck down. But you don't want to go too far. You don't want to go like fully into the corner. Give yourself some room. Then we're gonna come down here, line that up with the gusset. Once we have both of these in, we can do the flip and get that all glued in. Helps if you kind of push from all angles. There we go. Just leave it lightly tacked for now. Then we'll go in on the second side and we'll get this corner, and remember, we're lining everything up with this gusset, which is lined up with the top of the ID pocket on the other side. And you want to, you don't want to pull, you want to push. There's going to be extra material here on purpose. We don't want any stretching. We want this to pop out and do its thing and hold a lot of stuff. Also, you can unzip it. True, that's true. And that get a little thinner. Yep. But it also helps with 
placing things where you want to place them. There we go. The difficult part too can be like it not when you close it, those the leather knot, you know, like the actual like I don't know what you call it, like the clam <laughs> not lining up, like I'm sorry, the what? <laughs> the clam, you know. <laughs> so while our glue is drying. And everything is, I had to pull up a couple little pieces, re-glue. I want to make it perfect as I, much as I can. All we're going to do is use, because we've been using this as the distance that we're gluing to, we're just going to make a couple marks on our wallet shell. And that way we know that this is the part we need to glue. But I had to pull up my corner and re-glue it because it wasn't sitting the right way. And if you need to do that, that's okay. So I think it's sitting better now. It's much easier if you undo the zipper to sit, settle it, and it's going to look really bad while you're doing this. But I promise you, when you get it glued up and you get it hammered down, just like the other side, it's going to look great. So now we're even. That's what I wanted. It doesn't matter if it's lumpy at this point. We're adding up like six more layers. So what I'm going to go. Over, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over and sand this down. Then we need to glue this to this. And the last step is to just stitch the whole wallet. Okay, okay so you good? Yeah, throw yeah. throw clear for filming? Yeah, okay, so it's gonna look ugly. Oh wonky. Objectively ugly. <laughs> but if you look, when we put this down, everything lines up super nice. So once we get this glued in, hammered down, stitched, everything, it's all gonna come together. And it might not look perfect because it's my first one. But once you make a couple of these, they're going to look like Kaylina's, and Kaylina's look sick. So the only thing we need to do now is glue and stitch. And it's just one big stitch line like a card holder, except it has a curve. Or it has this situation you have to deal with. <laughs> so we've made our marks of where we need to glue to. And we're going to glue them on both sides. Well, on... This is our wallet, like the whole wallet. It's a Friday. I'm losing it. <laughs> and we'll go through, and this is definitely a wallet that you go through and just break all the seams, the interior seams, afterwards with a bone folder to get rid of all the glue, the extra glue above the stitch line, because we want to use a little extra glue to make sure this sticking really helps. Um, now, on this piece, you want to make sure you don't over glue it. So where we have our gusset and where everything meet up, that's where you want to start your glue line. And like I said, these corners, you're going to think something's wrong. You're going to think you messed up. I promise you, it's just because everything's skived down so thin that it's like kind of all over the place. But that makes it more pliable when we attach it to that to get a nice smooth transition. And sometimes it's not about the final product, it's about the journey. <laughs> In this case, this is too much of a journey for the final product to suck. So we're gonna we're gonna do our best to make sure the final product plays out as we want it to. Alright, so all we have to do is we're gonna glue this in. I'm gonna just go from corner to corner. And you can see if you have to do some trimming, that's fine, but you're gonna want to really push this because it's going to seem like it's too small, and I promise you it's not. So get one side glued in, and really work it to get your corners where you want them, because you got a whole lot of turns and a whole lot of tensions and all sorts of stuff going. And then I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to push that corner right in. And if you have to unzip, and you have to unzip. We're going to bring this up through here, and I'm bending in a little bit. There we go. Then we'll zip that up. We'll take our bone folder. Ideally, I would love to be able to hammer this, but it's just too small of a seam. Then we're going to get this all stuck down. And now we're pretty much done. So the only special thing with stitching here is when you lay your stitch line right here, you're going to want to punch over. Can you see where I'm pointing? Okay, so you have this layer of the where the zipper's attached, and you noticed all I did was tuck the zipper in. 
that's enough. If you want to put a zipper stop at the end, absolutely go for it. But that's what that extra three quarter of a zipper it is for, is to tuck in. But when you're punching this, we're gonna punch along the whole thing. Grab the other one. But you can see here, you're gonna punch one hole over this gusset, then you're gonna move it out of the way and continue punching here. Because we obviously don't wanna punch, we don't need to punch anything here, right? So I'm actually gonna do this off camera. Um, it's about quitting time and you guys have seen me stitch a bunch of times. That's the only special case with this. And then I'll come back with the finished product. And um, hopefully it looks nice. We can see as we fold it up, mm. everything lines up nice. But it's really a lot of these bumps and stuff you can tell in the finished one. Everything smooths out once you get it together and you smush it down and you get it right. So this is one of those pieces where you really, ooh, look at the bend in that. That's really pretty. So this is a Newberry Leathers American Bison. Um, you really gotta trust yourself on this one. You gotta trust the process. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna stitch everything up and I'll come back, probably gonna oil the inside. I'll come back and show you the final product. And here we go. So I should have made this over, but I didn't because I wanted to show you that it's okay to make something that's not perfect the first time. So this is my version. I got some dye on it. The corners aren't perfect, but the design itself is so solid. You have a nice zip pocket here. The zipper takes both corners and it's a super easy way to do something like this. But you also have one, two, three, four, five credit card slots and an ID slot. Um, Kaylina's is much more pretty than mine is. As you can see, she did the nice stitched around everything. Um, but also the American Bison from Newberry with the pull-up is gorgeous. So I want to show you how mine came out. It didn't come out bad. It's just, you know, I admittedly am taking, when you're in this profession for a long time, sometimes you got to take like a month or two breaks to just not go as heavy on the wallets and stuff. And um, after I did the 200 piece run, when Kayleen unfortunately got sick, I got a little burnt out, take them, taking the holidays off, haven't done any custom work in a couple months, so I'm a little I'm I'm a little rusty, but I wanted to show you that that's totally okay. Sometimes you gotta make a wallet, see the project through, and then the next time I'll know how to handle these corners better, as Kaylina does in hers. Um, the pattern is great. If you've never done a corner, if you've always wanted to do a zipper on wallet like this, this pattern makes it super easy to do without learning all of the, um, see, I didn't even tuck the tail in, um, without learning the way you like stack cardboard and stuff, which we're gonna get into this year. We know how to do that too. Um, but this is a really good beginner project. So that's gonna be it for this one. Please ignore my bad stitch lines and my stains. Uh, the pattern will be in the description for a few bucks. And uh, I think this is actually coming out on Tuesday because it's January and time means nothing. Uh, and then we have a the mother of all woven tote bags coming out, which is either going to be which is this next week's video, which is either going to be like Saturday or Sunday. So thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.